If you're looking for tips on how to work with a remote team, you have come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the very process that we follow every time we build an automated solution for our clients. If that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest to you, definitely swing by our website. I will include a link below that has access to our free Airtable crash course. But without further ado, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that is life has changed overnight for the way that we are supposed to be working if we are, in fact, able to still be working. There's such a strong need right now to have nice systems in place that help you work remotely. And this lends very nicely to what we've been doing over the last few years with our YouTube channel and our products, helping people to build databases in Airtable and automate those processes. So today I wanna to take a step back from our normal videos and really just outline what that overall process looks like and how it can help you in your business through this difficult time. Specifically, what we're going to be going into is how to build a no-code or a low-code app that suits your specific use case for your business. Now listen, every business is different. Everybody has their little things that they do differently that gives them their competitive advantage. And it's so hard to find an out-of-the-box software that serves all of your needs. The real value of Airtable and Zapier is that they allow you to custom build your own solution, essentially your own app without ever needing to know code. So let's just jump into the actual process that we follow with our clients. These are the same steps that you yourself can take building out this automated procedure for your own business. So the first step is to always map out your process. Now there's a lot of information that you need to collect here when you're performing this map. And essentially this is like an outline, right? You would never want to sit down and start writing a thesis paper without first outlining what you're going to be talking about. Same thing here. This will save you a ton of time on the back end if you work on building the proper outline or map in the first place. Now, during the mapping process, you want to be thoughtful about capturing a few pieces of data. The first thing you want to know is what information are you capturing at every stage of this process? Let's say, for example, you were to map out a job application process. Well, first you would say, hey, we're gonna post a job offer. You know, then people are gonna apply for that job offer. They're gonna submit their response. And with that, maybe they'll include their resume and some other paperwork, great. Then we're gonna, you know, show that to certain members of our team. They will look through all those different applications and rank them. Uh, you know, maybe they're scoring them, something along those lines. Then we're either deciding to move forward or not with certain candidates. If we move forward, we're going to have some job interviews. You know, you get the idea, right? There are all these different steps. The things that you want to take out of that in your mapping process are twofold. One, the information itself. So in this case, somebody submitted a resume, they submitted uh, an application, then somebody submitted a score or a ranking on those people, right? These are the data points that we're capturing along the way. The other thing you want to make sure to identify here are the actors. The actors are the people or organizations that are interacting with the data. So the different actors in this case would be your internal uh, review team, but also the people who are submitting those applications, right? And so not only do you wanna identify the actors and the information, but really map out how they interact and what that overall process looks like. Okay, that takes us to step two. Step two is identifying your data sets. When I say data sets, I'm really referring to the different you know, chunks of data that you're gonna be capturing over and over again, right? So in one case, you might consider an application to be a, a data set, right? Every time somebody submits an application, that is a specific record in your application's data set. So you would, you know, presumably receive your know, multiple applications over time and you'd bundle them all together as the same data set of applications. Each application would be its individual record. Similarly, people scoring those applications could be a separate set of data because you might have, you know, five different people on your team who are reviewing those applications, each of them submitting their own score. So that would be perhaps a different data set. You're going to have a lot of different data sets and you have to map out how they interact with the other data sets. So the application is submitted and then it might 
uh, be sent over for review or for scoring with five different reviews, right? All right, that takes us to step three. Step three is where we leverage the power of a relational database. Now, if you're new to this channel, you might not know this, but we love Airtable as a solution for this. It's way more advanced than spreadsheets because it allows us to build relationships between our data. As in the example I've been using where we have uh, you know, applications and then also people reviewing them, those pieces of data are interrelated or connected. A spreadsheet doesn't give us the same depth of relationship because quite frankly, a spreadsheet is a two-dimensional tool, whereas a relational database has a third dimension and it allows us to link or you know, relate those data points. So Airtable is a fantastic solution. You could build your solution with any number of online databases, but Airtable is kind of my go-to. Uh, we have built our business around it. And quite frankly, they have a, a, a great user interface and a free version if you're getting new or if you're just getting started. So check them out at Airtable.com and learn about all the different things you can build with Airtable as a relational database. So once you've settled on that database, you'll then build out the structure. You will organize uh, the architecture, so to speak, of the different points of data that you want to collect. And that takes us to step four. Step four is where we are going to automate the processes on the back end. And so going back to that mapping process that we did in step one, where you say when this happens, then something else happens, we're going to now automate the procedures inside of our database. So that if you, you know, for example, look at an application and change a status to denied, as in you denied a job applicant, then you might have a templated email that follows automatically that says, thanks for your interest. At this time, we're going to pursue some other candidates and, uh, you know, whatever, whatever that template looks like. Alternatively, you might have, you know, if you mark move on to the next stage as the status, well, then a different type of email would be sent, right? You can build all of these processes to be completely automated using a software. Well, there are a couple of different softwares available, but we tend to use one called Zapier. Similar to Airtable, Zapier has a free version, so you can kind of explore it and decide if it's something you like and then upgrade as time goes on. But that's those are the four steps that we follow for every single situation that we build. And the end result here is really a fully automated app that takes zero coding experience at all. Really all it forces you to do is structure the process, build the architecture to, you know, house that data and then automate what you need to on the back end. I hope you found this outline to be really helpful. And if you did do check out our Airtable crash course, I will include a link below and uh, that will help you get up to speed and running with Airtable quickly and easily. In the meantime, stay safe during this crazy time. I wish you all the best and good luck automating. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site. So swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.